The following is a CUNY TV special presentation. I'm honored to welcome you to the opening convocation of the new community college of the City University of New York. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and peer mentors of the new community college, we welcome the leaders of our city, the regents, our university, and the many other friends who have helped to make possible CUNY's first new community college in more than 40 years. But most of all, we are pleased to be here with you, the inaugural class of the new community college. The guiding force for the new community college is our chancellor, Dr. Matthew Goldstein. His exemplary leadership during his tenure as chancellor since 1999 has resulted in, an, in what is today the CUNY Renaissance. Would you please join me in welcoming the chancellor and thanking him for his leadership. I'm. Uh delighted to be here uh, with you this morning. Uh, this has been a long and arduous journey, but uh, we have arrived. Uh, we took this journey with wind at our face, but uh, that did not stop us uh, from moving ahead. Do you know, community colleges um, are probably the least understood, and I would uh, say the least appreciated in the asset classes uh, that make up uh, higher education. But there is one data point, uh, actually two data points, that I think are worth uh, absorbing. One is about 48% of the students that study at universities in the United States today study at a community college. And here is a data point that I think will knock you off your seats. When I heard it, I didn't believe it, but then I did some research and indeed it's true. In the United States today, 20% of the doctoral degrees that are granted by American universities are to students who started their education at a community college. That really is a remarkable statistic which really shows You know, it was only a few years ago where I sat with our mayor uh, and talked with him for about an hour about community colleges. And we shared the, the problem that we both understood all too well, that graduation rates were just not where they need to be. And he said to me, what are you prepared to do about it? And I said, we have an idea. And that was the reason that I wanted to share the idea with the mayor. He listened and, of course, always asked deeply probing questions. And then he provided the capital that was needed to take this idea, shape it, and develop it into a program that has had absolutely startling results. The results were so startling that, again, I didn't believe it. I'm a data guy, and the mayor certainly is a data guy. So we hired MDRC, a very prominent research organization, to look at the data carefully and then tell us what the reality is. They came back and said, your data are spot on. You have a clean financial statement, and for that we were deeply pleased. But then we took the idea and said, we're on to something, and why don't we start a new community college? Throughout this entire period, this mayor has been extraordinarily supportive not only supportive in a political sense, but supportive uh, in a financial sense, to allow the City University to take the lead nationally and reimagining community college education. And that's why we were here today. If we were not supported by the mayor, 
none of us would be in the room today. And that is exactly the truth. Merrill Tisch has been a very strong advocate for what it is that we want to do. We were successful in recruiting Scott Evenbeck to be the founding uh, president of this new venture and had the undivided support of the CUNY trustees and the very, very strong support of our presidents who understood what it is that we wanted to do. There are two people among the vast array of people that really need to be uh, stood out today, and that is John Mogulescu, our uh, university dean and, and president of the uh, School of Professional Studies, and Tracy Mead, who really took the lead at a very early stage, and with John identified people from around the United States, people within the system, to come forward and mold and create a plan for this community college. But the one individual that really deserves the undivided attention of all of you is our great mayor. Mike Bloomberg, I have always said, is the university mayor that really understands community colleges. It is a mayor, he is a mayor who is leading the way nationally on educational reform. So today, Mr. Mayor, if you would join me at the podium, I would like to present to you something that is rarely, uh, rarely uh, given in the university. I have given it just a couple of times. It is the Chancellor's Medal, the highest award that we can confer in this great city university in New York. And Mr. Mayor, it was chosen for you because without your staunch support, none of us would be in this room today to celebrate an extraordinary experience and an extraordinary experiment that I believe is going to change the conversation nationally about how we educate community college students. So Mr. Mayor, if you would join me at the podium. Uh, Matt, thank you so much. It really is an honor to receive the Chancellor's Medal, and it just goes to show that in New York City, anything is possible. If you have someone like me who is a pretty indi indifferent student winning such an important academic honor, uh, to paraphrase the great Yogi Berra, if some of my high school teachers were alive today, they'd probably be turning over in their graves. <laughs> and that's because they might knew Mike Bloomberg as the kind of student who made the top half of the class possible. I always tell that joke, and then I wait to see how long from when I deliver the punchline till you get the laughs. You guys got about a B plus. Uh, but even though, seriously, I may not have been a star pupil back in those days, um, since then I've learned to respect the power of education, including the importance of community colleges. And that's why three weeks ago, uh, three years ago, I stood next to Matt, and uh, you can call a chancellor Matt. I can because I'm the mayor. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you do it, faculty members. A little bit of respect, you know, it's academia. Um, I stood next to Matt on a stage at the Borough of Manhattan Community College and pledged to all we could to help create the new community college that's opening its doors today. And this is a day and age when, unfortunately, there's just not a lot of extra money in the city budget to support new projects. But we've made an exception for the new community college, and that's not only because it's the first new community college in our city in more than 40 years, it's also because I think this school has the potential to be a game-changing model for community colleges across the country. There's been a tre tremendous amount of attention focused on community colleges in recent years, and that's all to the good because, after all, as Matt pointed out, uh, about 45% of the college students in the nation attend community colleges. Community colleges also are exactly what Matt and I called them three years ago, the gateway to the middle class. 
with students like the ones here today learn the skills and the credentials and get the credentials that increase their earning power and put them on a pathway to fulfilling careers and also to increasing the productivity of our entire economy. And for all those reasons, uh, President Obama has proposed a national goal, one if completely supported, uh, would graduate an additional five million community college students by the end of this decade. It really would be a game changer in this country, so let us hope that Washington can actually deliver. Um, now, if we uh, don't do that, we have to face some really hard, uh, harsh facts, and that is today, here and across the nation, only about one in every five community college students earns a degree within three years, and a very large percentage never earn a degree at all. Uh, there are a lot of factors that contribute to that, the economic hardships that many students face, the demands of jobs and family that students often have to meet even while engaged in their studies, and the fact that many students just don't get the guidance that they need to make the big step up to succeeding in college. All of that contributes to what uh, all too often is a tragic waste of effort, ambition, and opportunity for the students who lose their way and for our country. But the good news is that, at least here in New York City, we've shown we can do better than that. About five years ago, our administration, through our Center for Economic Opportunity, otherwise known as CEO, worked with CUNY to create a pilot project called Accelerated Study in Associate Programs, or ASAP. And we designed ASAP to provide low-income community college students with academic, financial, and social support that helps them earn degrees in areas like, for example, nursing. Uh, today, five years later, ASAP is in place in six community colleges, and the result is more than 50% of students in the program who are, able to, are able to earn their degrees within three years, and that is twice the national average. It's that kind of success that has made educators and researchers all across the country sit up and take notice, and it has also led to the, uh, the idea that we have here of an entirely new community college, one that offers extra support to students and also requires a lot of extra effort from students. I remember when I went to college, uh, I didn't have to support my family. Uh, I didn't have to uh, take care of some of the members of my family. All I had to do was have a job while I was in college so I could pay the tuition bills, and my parents helped a little bit that they could. Uh, but it was uh, compared to the challenges facing kids today, uh, I was really blessed. I had almost a free ride by comparison. Uh, you listen to the stories of those who have to work and raise their family, and when their college students be the adult in their families, it just gives you pause to think how lucky some of us were, uh, but how driven these young men and women are. They understand that education is the future for themselves, as well as their family, as well as the country, and they're doing something about it. So let me just say something about the 330 students here. Uh, this is a big moment for you. Today you'll walk through the doors of the new school that we're opening, your school, the new community college, and you also walk to the next chapters of your lives. Uh, I want to tell you I am proud and confident in each of you. I'm proud because it really does take a lot of courage to be the first to do something, to be pioneers. And as the first class in New Community College, a new school with a bold new approach to learning, that's exactly what you are. Uh, many of you are pioneers in another sense. You'll be the first in your families to go to college. Uh, that's an enormous achievement, one that you've got every right to take pride in. It is the great American dream. Uh, you won't remember, but many years ago, even before I was born, uh, the great American dream was a dream that people around the world had. They came here, they came to the Lower East Side. Uh, they shed, incidentally, all the remnants of their past. They changed their names, they changed their uh, cooking, they changed their clothing, they changed uh, uh, their language uh, just to become Americans. And they went to work not thinking that they were going to be successful, but the great dream, if they worked two or three jobs all day long, seven days a week, was maybe, maybe their kids could go to college. And who knows? Today, you can really make a difference. You, in many senses, are the product of exactly that kind of thinking. Uh, being a pioneer is a little overwhelming. Everybody knows that. Uh, and that's why uh, President Evenbeck and his team are committed to being with you every step of the way to give you the guidance and advice 
and they'll also expect you to do your best. And as I said, we stretched the city budget to help start this school. Uh, thankfully, we had help from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and I'm delighted they are represented here today by Program Officer Ann Wynn. Uh, together, we're investing something more in you, and we're also expecting something more from you. Uh, a few weeks ago, one of our city's newspapers did a story about uh, this school and interviewed some of your incoming students. Uh, one whose name struck me is Destiny Jackson. Uh, Destiny, you have exactly the right name for this school uh, because uh, it's one that has special meaning, seriously, for the entire class. Because each of you really are holding your uh, destinies in your own hands. I'll just tell you from somebody that I guess has been more successful than anybody has a right to be. Uh, I never thought I was the smartest person in the room, but I always thought I could outwork everybody else. And that would be my advice to you. Be the first one in, be the last one to leave, be the one that stays at your desk. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That person next to you doesn't know the answer any more than you do. Uh, you may think that it's embarrassing to ask a question, but I've always asked the question and I've always been surprised that everybody said afterwards, thank you for asking. So uh, now you have a chance to make a difference. Um, I say the same thing to you that I say to everyone that either joins my team at City Hall or joins me in my company. Uh, welcome aboard. Don't screw it up. <laughs> or words to that effect. So let me just simply add, this is an opportunity to learn, to grow, and launch your careers here in the greatest city in the world. Good luck. God bless all of you. I'm going back to work. Please join me in welcoming a longtime supporter of CUNY and its mission, Cancer Meryl Tears. I'm not going to keep you. What I would really like is for all of the freshman members of this outstanding class to please stand. God bless you, God bless Matthew Goldstein, and God bless this great country who has given us this wonderful thing. Congratulations to all of you. We are honored that Ann Wynn, Senior Program Officer, is with us this morning to celebrate our opening. She's been with the Gates Foundation since 2006 when she joined the College Ready team to replicate high-impact school models. Please join me in welcoming Ann Wynn. Uh, thanks to all of you for the honor at speaking at Convocation. I am so thrilled to be here today, and like you, not just excited about this morning, but also excited about the inaugural year that lies ahead and the journey that you have all embarked upon. As President Evan Beck mentioned, I'm a senior program officer at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where our leading belief is that everyone deserves to live a healthy and productive life. Every day, I have the great privilege of applying the money and passion of three remarkable individuals, Bill Gates, Melinda Gates, and Warren Buffett, to solve some of the hardest challenges in this country to opportunity. And my team in particular, we focus on higher education. We want every student who has the will to get a degree after high school to have a way to do so no matter where they were born, who their parents are, or what their skills or interests may be. And it's not about any degree, it's about a degree that's affordable, and a degree that will get you a job that will support you and your families. So for me, like others in this room, this job isn't a job. It's deeply personal. Uh, my parents and my older brother immigrated to the United States in 1975 uh, from Vietnam. And when they got here, they spoke no English, had no money, and had no network to help them navigate the opportunity structure in this country. But the one thing that they did have was a strong desire to increase their education and their economic mobility. So my dad finished his medical training in the US, and my mom got her degree at the age of 45. Today, too few young adults, despite their best intentions, are completing a post-secondary credential. Only 23% of white students who enter a community college attain a degree in three years, 23%. And that's even worse for minority students. 15% of Latino students who enter a community college will get a degree in three years, and 11% of African-American students. 
That's further complicated by what you've heard about the price of going to college. You all know that the cost of getting a degree is just going up. The student loan debt in this country is higher than one trillion dollars. That is more than the entire nation's credit card debt. Everybody is in this country's credit card debt. That is a really big deal. And so this is, a, this is a really big problem, and it's a pretty grim picture when you think about it. But I'm really optimistic, and I'm optimistic because of people in this room. And the question is, what are you gonna do with the opportunity that stands in front of you? You have the opportunity to literally make history. As you heard, this is a grand experiment, and one of the best kind. So what is the story that you want the world to tell about you? to tell about the person sitting to your left and to your right, to tell about the new community college here at CUNY, because you have the ability to make a difference. All of us at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation congratulate you to getting this point, and we're so excited to see what's gonna happen next. We can't wait to see all of you at graduation. I have asked Eddie Dure, a peer mentor at the new community college, to offer his perspective to our opening day. Good morning and welcome all. It is an honor to be here today speaking on behalf of the peer mentors. I think I speak on behalf of everyone here at the college and the peer mentors when I say we're thrilled that this day has finally arrived. Since joining the peer mentors and the new community college as a peer mentor late last year, I have seen firsthand how much hard work and dedication has gone into ensuring the success of our incoming students. It was amazing to learn how much we all had in common. Whether it was sharing the same cultural background or something as small as sharing a love for Jamba Juice. These meetings were supposed to last anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, but I found myself meeting with students for 30 minutes at a time. I even sat with one student for over an hour to help him complete his FAFSA application on the web. In that time, I learned that we both were from the same neighborhood and his aunt actually owned a restaurant not too far from my home. Needless to say, we exchanged phone numbers. We want you all to know that we have your backs. And as you begin this new journey, we want you to view us as an extension of your family. So with that said, I want to leave you all with a bit of advice from Bill Cosby. He said, what you need to know about the past is that no matter what has happened, it has all worked together to bring you to this very moment. And this is the moment that you can choose to make everything new. So on behalf of the peer mentors in the new community college, I want to congratulate the inaugural class of students for taking the next step towards a bright future. Thank you. Now we have a chance, thanks to CUNY TV, to hear from some of our entering students. For me as a student, I knew that, oh my God, I can literally implement anything I want into here. I could do the, any number of clubs that really interested me in high school. Now I have the opportunity in college. And the fact that the college is brand new and they really did try to bring the best of the best, and I know they did, was something really amazing and really attracting about it. So a lot of people were talking about it, very good reviews about the college, and I want to be a part of history. I felt like I would, could help build a success in the building of the college. I can help out to make it better. The thought that me and my fellow classmates are going to be creating the fundamentals of the school and the fact that it's such a small school, I'll be able to have a personal relationship with students and my professors. I was able to pick different activities to do for like singing or even sports maybe. Because uh, I like being active, I like doing something different all the time. I try new things. The opportunities are great and the college seems very nice and Everyone there is very helpful and supportive. It's like a blank canvas if you look at it right now, and we're gonna be the painters, you know, the ones that add color and tone or whatever to the school. Mostly my friends and my family and the teachers in my high school, they pushed me to the limit even when I didn't wanna do anything in school, when I was slacking off, when I was getting left back. Even though it did bother me the most, it was all worth it. It took me five years, but look at me now. I'm, I'm a high school graduate. I'm, I'm going to NCC. I worked with my grandfather in construction, and that's like, uh, I find that amazing. It's, it's hard work, but just building something uh, or creating something new or repairing something and helping someone is 
I find that amazing. My grandfather and my uncle are like my mentors. They taught me everything about that. My mom, she, she wasn't able to finish school because she had me. I feel like by going, by going to college, it's gonna help take off from where she left off at. Growing up, I guess for me, it, it was very mixed. It was very difficult to be able to kind of just start making friends with around ninth grade and just start uh, really getting just a deeper connection with people around ninth grade and high school. And so then to then after be able to kind of be ridiculed um, to go on an overnight trip and have everyone just kind of make fun of me very atrociously and obnoxiously. People are malicious, but you have to be able to take life and you have to be able to say, you know what, if that's who they are, you have to put yourself uh, to be stronger and to be able to move forward. I don't give up on anything and I'm very optimistic. Even like when people tell me I can't do something, I still do it. And I feel like even when something bad does happen, I still look at it as like everything happens for a reason. I should just keep going like no matter what, because I'm just like nobody can't um, make my dreams come true but me. I can't just sit here and let it happen. My high school years were rough for me. Um, graduating on time was something very special to me. So I know if I push myself, I could do whatever I want. So college is basically the first step for my future. It's just something I needed to do for myself. Taking on opportunities, also taking on new obstacles and learning many new experience, new things. Even if you don't know it, it's better to know to learn it. I want to become a traveling nurse. I want to like go all around the world and like just do different things and I felt like traveling nurse would be like the best. Nobody else in my family went to college so I felt like I should break that cycle and go to college and also my future goals contribute to me going to college because I can't get there unless I go to college. Since fifth grade I had this set plan that I would be a psychologist and so when I was accepted into NCC and then when I figured out that the president was a psychologist, I was head over heels happy. I sent him an email saying how thankful I was and he was, he was more than happy to, say, to tell me that he would even so far as allow me to poke his brain. I was like, I, I couldn't be any happier. So for me, my dreams are that after NCC, I'd go to some other senior school, get my bachelor's in psychology and hopefully in the next other years I'd get my master's and so on and so forth. I've thought a lot about being an English teacher for special ed students. Um, thought a lot about psychology as well. So those are the two that I'm basically juggling with. I'm trying to find my way. So NCC is just going to help me, I guess, to do that. Well, my educational goal is to get my master's degree in uh, human resource management or accounting. I would like to work on Wall Street. <laughs> Like I wanted to work for forensic scientists and that really interests me. To me it's like a puzzle and I've always loved puzzles. It's like sitting there figuring out what happened, how this happened, why did this happen and just asking questions and being a detective. I love it. I've always loved it. I would like to become probably a computer engineer so that around that field, you know, anything logical based. Engineering is, you know, it's the way to go because I want to be part of the future. I'm Jose Muniz. My name is Shade Moss. Hi, my name is Stephen Cousin. My name is Maria Lisset Estrada. My name is Ade from Charta. I'm Carolyn Vasquez. I'm Stefan Emerson. I'm Stephen Emerson.